hear me? Are we on? Okay. Well, hopefully Richard will be joining us eventually. If not, we have photography for him. So, my name is Barrett Steenrod. Speak up a bit more? Okay. My name is Barrett Steenrod, and this capstone effort of mine was born out of two experiences that I had. One was the experience of growing up in a small city in Illinois that had seen the community decline as globalization had happened. And the other was of a conversation I had with Jason Cow, a professor in the planning program, who talked about how oftentimes he sees design that doesn't necessarily that isn't necessarily informed by like good metrics or good good practices. And so as I went into this capstone, I was concerned about applying the lessons I'd learned in my my education as an, as an MLA student and a planning student to help improve the quality of life in a particular place, uh, but also wanted to make sure that what I was suggesting and what I was proposing was reasonable and was based on something other than just my opinion. And so to that effect, you'll notice on my first board here, there are a number of icons that you'll see. And if a picture is worth a thousand words, well then there's thousands of words behind each of these icons. Uh, these represents uh, a number of different principles or practices that inform the proposals that I'm going to make. Uh, they're drawn from case studies of small cities that have found a way to pick themselves up and revitalize. They're drawn from my interviews with entrepreneurs, with developers, with other planners, landscape architects, and of course fellow students and, and faculty here. Um, I've also drawn from uh, economic redevelopment work um, based on micropolitan cities as well as Robert J. Gibbs' book uh, on professional uh, retail practices, especially as they concern space making. He's been a consultant in the retail industry for the last 20 years and he's a landscape architect as well. Ah, excellent. And it's also drawn from my study of the entrepreneurship literature, trying to understand uh, does design have a place within fostering entrepreneurship in a place either from an, in terms of the social entrepreneurship of programming within a place or the economic entrepreneurship of job creation? And as I went into this process thinking about Brainerd, I started designing. And when I came to them and met with them a second time at the half semester mark, I realized that my well thought out proposals for drawing on these to foster entrepreneurship uh, didn't have any teeth. The community has too much divisiveness, there's too much contention, and they don't have a process that enables them to achieve visions that have been laid out for them before. And indeed, there have been other visions that have been laid out. Uh, there was a RUDAT study in 1989 consisting of a number of different professionals who said, do this. And then there was a master plan in 2002 that said, do this. And then there's the comprehensive plan which said, okay, well, we're trying to do this. And then there have been further planning studies asking people what do we need to do. And in a lot of these cases, they, preside, they present a destination but no way to get to that destination. And so. I want to be responsible to my client, so this project is going to pay attention to that. Within Brainerd, if people aren't getting along and we want them to be able to come to a place where they can make something happen, then we need to think about the ways in which people can get along. And you'll see here at the bottom of this board, there's a number of images that show you a whole lot of different programs that are happening. There's a car show, there's a Gus Macker tournament, there's auctions, there's art fairs, there's chalk festivals, there's a lot of things going on. And what you'll notice in every one of these programs, they're taking place within the street or the parking lot. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the streets and the parking lots of Brainerd in just a little bit. Brainerd specifically is anchored within the middle of the lakes region and it has its origin to the investment of infrastructure, rail, railroad, that led to the creation of a settlement and that has led to the success of its surrounding region. On this map you'll notice that there's areas that are light yellow and these are other centers within the region where there's a majority of jobs um, and uh, opportunity from an economic standpoint. And throughout the region, there's lots of recreational opportunity. You have, of course, have the lakes, which it's known for. There's a lot of forest, but also there's an extensive trail system of snowmobiles. There's an extensive proposed um, bicycle system in terms of just making use of the roads for a bicycle tour. And they also have the Paul Bunyan Trail, which extends for 80 miles and is anchored on the southern end by Brainerd. 
And when we move into the city itself, you can see that that trail runs into Brainerd, but it never crosses the river properly and never actually gets to the heart of downtown Brainerd, where the historic residential, historic business, and historic industry have all been located. Within this larger map, I have, uh, have icons indicating a lot of the different assets from a social standpoint. Uh, I have the churches, I have the restaurants, I have the uh, organizations that are, that are available. There's coffee shops, there's parks, and all of these are places where people can get together, where collaboration can happen, and where ideas and dreams can be realized, whether it's a small dream or a big dream. Uh, Brainerd's realized uh, that it owes its existence you know, and it's been strong due to the railroad, due to these investments, but because of the competition within its region, it no longer commands the massive share of, of, of employment that it once did. And when people identify with the region, they talk about going up to Brainerd, they often talk about the cabins, the lakes, the trails, but they don't associate with downtown Brainerd. Downtown Brainerd um, was a very busy place at one point, and it is indeed a bit busy now, but not so much anymore. And the cities realize this, and they're realizing we need to take advantage of these assets that are nearby, uh, whether it's the river access, whether it's the trails, whether it's being close to this lakes region. And they begin to take advantage of funds and monies to connect to these trail systems. In fact, they're building some more trails this year. Recently, in fact, last fall, they've changed their zoning law so that along Washington Avenue here, which is 210 and then 371, they've changed this zoning right along this area. And when you look at the parcel map indicating property values, there are a number of parcels that are very low on a dollar per square foot basis. Uh, green and yellow represents low values, and specifically green is less than 50 cents a square foot. And that includes the land and the buildings. And so the opportunity within, within Brainerd for my proposal falls within this historic area where these opportunities have presented themselves. Now, specifically, one of the assets of Brainerd and one of, one of the characteristics of the site you'll notice is the amount of parking that's available. Now, in the 1989 RUDAT study, they identified uh, that there was a 25% oversupply of parking. And that was 20 years ago, and that was before the Paramount Theater was burned down, that was before the highway bypass was built, that was before some of the job loss had occurred. And since that time, you know, and this was based on about 625, 650 parking spaces in downtown. Within my study area, I identified 1,600 parking spaces. And so, uh, one of the best practices that I wanted to tie into is converting assets or to converting liabilities to assets, or looking at what your assets can be. And one of the assets Brainerd has is a lot of developed space that is suitable for a lot of different programming, much like a stage. Okay, with a stage you can put on whatever show you want. Well, if we begin thinking of these stages in this way, then we can think about programming in this way, and then forms are going to follow from that. This area is anchored to the north by a residential neighborhood, and to the south, you have ball fields, athletic facilities, and Kiwanis Park. And the beginning of my proposal is based on connecting this residential area with these recreation areas along East River Road. This is East River Road right now. These are the neighborhoods to the north. This continues south, and then it's Parkland. Two blocks of beautiful concrete that's not marked in any way. Very safe for children and young families. Okay. Uh, you'll notice, you, you, know, you can see the other photos depicting the site. Most of the vegetation within this area is actually around the parking lot around City Hall and the Credit Union. From East River Road, we want to take advantage of the extensive parking behind the new jail facility. This was developed just in the last couple of years. And then we also want to stitch together programs along Front Street. This is currently a street that dead ends on the jail loading facility and runs into the part of downtown that's been redeveloped in the last couple of years where they've done streetscape improvements. And then also taking advantage of uh, extra parking within some of these lots. So looking at the first phase, how, how would this happen? Well, the city doesn't have a lot of money. There's some divisiveness within the community. How can you get something started? And I looked to Hayward, Wisconsin, where they've built up an incredible infrastructure based on tourism, based on these really popular events that have happened. And certainly in the case studies that I found, 
those kinds of events were, were very pertinent to making larger infrastructure or physical changes happen. So within this particular space, within East River Road, the programming is quite simple. It's a free-for-all right now. We paint it so that we communicate to people that something's happening in Brainerd because they want things to happen. And we make this safer by delineating it. Right now there's no paint to market at all and the street's 45 feet wide. Okay, So we make this, this pedestrian slash bike connection, those two blocks, down to the, down to the park to the parkland. We extend those lanes on West Front Street and then within the historic, within the jail, not historic, it's new, within the jail facility, we think about how we can reprogram this lot to maintain the existing, the existing parking but also layering other uses on top of that. So if you look at the existing jail lot, we have two two-way drive lanes with parking on each side except there's no parking here, there's the building. And within Brainerd, their code suggests that if you have one way, you can do the lane that's 15 feet wide. And so by putting in one lane of parking here and doing an angled parking on this first row, we gain enough space to put in to continue this bicycle pedestrian realm along the back of this building. In addition, we treat the back of this building as something that's a community asset from the standpoint of advertising and promoting the region, from the standpoint of hooking into the artists that are there, from the standpoint of connecting with anything that anyone might want to do that they feel good about with their community can be represented within the back of this facility. When you're not just straight having access or having parking, you can then begin to annex up until the middle of this, uh, of this row of parking and you can end up programming an entire use within this space. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, you would still maintain two-way access for parking on the back side, and so you don't disrupt the flow of being able to access this facility because it is used 24-7 um, as it is right now. Uh, when we move into the downtown, into this core area here, you can look at Front Street, and uh, currently Front Street as it exists right now, uh, there's parallel parking, but it's never used. It's largely empty most of the time. I've been in there on Friday and Saturday, and you'll never see parking along this road because there's plenty of parking on the streets. Uh, within the space here, and within these restaurants, within, within these lots, uh, we have an excess of parking. We begin to access some of that and treat those spaces as stages. So what's a stage that we could program it with? Well, if we think about the idea of pocket parks, if we think about the idea of other uses that can go into those empty stalls, and maybe just 10% of those stalls, we begin to change the nature of this space. We, can, we again begin communicating that something is happening within this town that's different than people are used to. This was supposed to be on vibrate to let me know when I was halfway, and I don't know why it did. And that might, that might go off again, so John, can you it's just hang on to that for me? <laughs> so, the... Uh, Within, within these kinds of spaces here, you'll see that where I've got the, light, the, the very bright green, I mean, you can, where you can begin to change that, okay, and begin changing this fabric. We're not doing any infrastructure moves yet, we're just changing the surface treatment. And you can see this begins to change it dramatically. Um, if you're a bicyclist and you're coming into Brainerd, either on the trail, you're hoping to leave there, this communicates something about you're welcome to stay, you're welcome to spend some money. Okay, If you're a resident or if you happen to work in these places and you're on your lunch break, well, where would you go right now? Well, let's go to this part of the asphalt lot or let's drive away versus staying in a place and enjoying where you are. Um, within Front Street, the city has, an, has a decision to make. It can either choose to begin just annexing these individual parking spaces within the street and doing something like this, or it could simply say, you know what, we want to do really something really dramatic. We're going to treat this street space as canvas and we're going to completely paint it differently. And we're going to delineate where that, that drive aisle is that's shared with bikes and, and anyone else. But the rest of it's given over to the pedestrian realm. And the use of chalk festivals in a lot of places indicates how this could become a very beautiful place. We'll see in a, in a, in a little bit how chalk can change your streetscape, or can change a plane. When we move into the second phase, well, how is this second phase going to happen? My wife and I like to host people for dinner. And our little one bedroom place is sufficient for the most part. But there's going to come a time when, if we want to host more, host all of you, 
Our facilities aren't quite enough to do the job. We can probably do it and it might be okay, but it's not gonna be great. So we'll need a larger facility or we might need to make some investments. In the same way, that's going to drive phase two. When the programmings that are taking place within the lots, within the streets, begin happening, then, and they become successful, they started small and they've grown, people are gonna say, say, we can do this better why can't we make this easier? And that begins to drive infrastructure improvements. And so within East River Road, instead of East River Road, East River Parkway, let's talk about what it is, connecting residents and their neighborhoods to the parks down below. You begin putting in the very simple and dumb kind of things like plantings that soften this realm up and communicate that this is a place that's safe and it's not as loud and as hard as you, as you remember it to be. Within this parking facility here, uh, where there was paint, they're now going bollards. And the bollards serve two purposes. One, they'll all have lights, and so that they'll delineate this space at night in a very visual way between the driving and the parking. But the bollards that have utility connections, water and power, are gonna be colored differently. And those bollards that then exist along here serve as anchor points both to launch infrastructure such, such as tents, but also to hook in infrastructure so that it can, you can easily begin to support larger festivals or events without having to bring in a lot of portable on-site equipment. Uh, but if that's not going on, then the lot pretty much exists how it is. And, in, and indeed, you can bring these bollards into space in between the existing lamps that run through the middle of this, of this, of this row of parking, and you can actually use up the whole lot then if you want to do a circus or something really big. Uh, when we think about this downtown area, uh, if you'll remember, there's one parcel in particular that's very low valued, and it's one parcel, less than 50 cents a square foot. It's on a very busy highway that leads through town and comes into town. And so if the city wants to begin infilling and doing something that connects this neighborhood to its downtown in a very specific way that addresses the abundance of our asset, uh, which is parking, uh, then this is going to be the parcel where that happens. And so providing more of the Class A, really convenient 16-foot ceiling, uh, put a secondary use above it, get that fronting on the street, and then bringing the connection, uh, you know, this right-of-way exists on paper, it's on the maps, but it's never been developed, and actually putting a park here so that this neighborhood and residents can begin to reach down into this space. When you've done this, you then free up these tenants, which are pretty much insurance agents and a printer, to consider, this has, there might be better visibility here, this might be better for my business, and locate in there. That frees up these historic buildings for redevelopment and reuse, and gets it a character that's more befitting of what Brainerd is interested in. Um, and then of course you can see within Front Street, we have, we've, we've made these markings, the streetscaping, a bit more permanent. And you can see on Front Street here, we've begun to get this idea of festival and painting that differently. And then after you've done that, that then moves into phase three, which is once you've addressed this, you can begin addressing this and the kinds of infrastructure, the kinds of facilities and programs that we're wanting to support um, become a bit more uh, supportable. The, you know, the city halls right here and this bank here, they both open out onto their existing parking lots. And by changing this space, we can go ahead and address the orientation of the buildings, begin to create usable public space that adds value. The developers will tell you, you take the best space and make it for the public and the developers will build around that. And at this point, we, be, we can infill these facilities um, w with more buildings that complete this streetscape and open up onto this. And of course, then this plaza reaches up and we've begun to demarcate this space. This is where the historic Paramount Theater was, and we've called this out, this is Paramount Plaza. Within all of this, this becomes a lab at this point. We develop the capabilities of being a lab um, to really test out these programs, to test out ideas, to think about how we can do infrastructure and programming a bit differently within the stages that we have in Brainerd. And as we develop the culture of taking these kinds of risks in doing this, then we might want to think about, well, how can the U be involved in this? Like, wh what are the lessons in other places? And one of the places that I worked uh, right after my undergraduate was Clemson University. And one of their extension services is a youth learning institute, okay? We can take this idea, we can suggest, propose, 
this is valuable considering the overall local and regional context. This becomes a tenant and they begin really playing with the idea of how can you use these streetscapes and these spaces in really inventive ways. Um, additionally, you try and get in more of the convenience retail which is lacking within this area, which is important to people on their way home at night. Um, and then as a result of this larger overall redevelopment of this Paramount Plaza and these facilities, we can begin getting to what I was thinking about originally, which was the big vision. And the big vision was, how can you foster entrepreneurship in a place? How can you foster job creation? Well, we've come up a way, with a way of getting that socially, and by this point, we've arrived at the means of actually taking some big bites and doing some big things. And at this point in time, we can actually launch an entrepreneurship incubator. And I think one of the things that, that is a natural in for this, is if you consider the elements, if you consider the, the, the actual items that would populate this space, that have to be replaced every six to eight years to keep a space refreshing, and within at least those are the rules within retail trade. Streetscape elements such as lighting, such as trash cans, such as benches, these can be designed, these can be built, these can be prototyped, these can be demoed in this area. And the labor exists within Brainerd to build, to prototype, and to do this. Uh, before the recession, there were people building ski doos and jet skis and boats. Those people are still there. The jobs aren't. So you begin taking those skills and putting it to use in a really effective way that changes uh, this downtown and really comes full circle. Thank you very much.